I grew up in um, Central Village, Jiglin, um, in Jamaica, St. Patrick, um, and um, so growing up, well, met my father actually when I was 11 years old, and saw him uh, a couple times um, since then. Um, and so I grew up with people seeing guns all around me, seeing a lot of crime, a lot of violence.
that time they introduced the, the submarine car. And on my way home, I, I, I realized that the car only had one, one trip on it. So I needed a second trip to get home. So I said, okay, I'm just going to call David because it's now, I've got off the train and it's now just the bus that I need to, to get home. And so I called Dave um, to come to pick me up, and I couldn't get him. I had no money on me, no cash on me. I just had the, the car. I left home with it, feeling that that was enough. And I, I'm, I'm saying, what am I going to do? I can't. I nobody do it. It's any dark. I heard very distinctly the voice of God saying to me, "Look down." Thank you. 
they would pay a small fee. I now remember they paid a very, very small fee. First day, there were so many buses that came up to um, Sheraton Mall. Uh, we were told by the mall owner that this, this is creating a problem. By about the third or fourth day, they are saying this is a traffic jam. People want to know what is happening. Four or five buses are parked up in, you know, at, the, at, at the cinema, and they want to know what is going on. Uh, everybody says a movie, the children are here to see a movie. And it would be a revival in the schools of our babies. This was a big deal. And he told me to come and stand, to stand in the center. And he asked them, well, even before they prayed for me, he told them to bring money and to put at my feet. He asked them, he told me to, to tell them how much money I need. And I told them what I needed. And pastors were writing checks. They were taking money out of their pockets and they gave me, so, they, they covered so many expenses that day. I was, I was, I, I was dumbstruck. So it, 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 that, that experience with that pastor from Dubai was just mind boggling. He then went on to prophesy to me and he said, You're going to make many more movies. And he said, There is someone that he will be using in the US and that's going to take what is in the job. And uh, and the, the, the film wasn't it wasn't just about being emotional. It was about a, a teenage girl who got pregnant and um, got so um, you know wasn't sure what to do. Was afraid and tried to abort her child. And so many of them could relate to that story. And then what happened is that in the evening, the the, the parents were we were going on and telling their parents about it. And like God, the great marketer and the great distributor, he had this whole thing all planned out because the children were going home and telling their parents and their aunties and their uncles about the thing that they watched. And in the evening, when I would arrive at the cinema to see what was going on, I would notice that some of the same children were going in with their parents, four or five people going in with the children. Isn't God a great marketer? Good afternoon, my name is Jonathan Daniel and I'm 25 years old and I'm just here to give my experience um, from watching Hush 1, the first movie. So I would have been around 14, around age 14 and I remember the teacher coming to our class and telling us that we have the opportunity to go to the cinema um, to watch a locally produced film called Hush and the movie started and when the movie started as it was progressing, I realized a lot of the things were current. Um, it felt very youthful, even to the music that was used in the film. And very quickly, um, everyone was very, became very focused on the movie. Uh, persons were, we were very interested, we became invested in the characters in the movie. And as it continued and it, and it reached the climax and it came to an end, um, it had a, a, a reaction in the actual cinema. Like, I looked to my left and I saw girls crying. I looked to my right and I saw people crying and tearing up. And for me, I, would, I didn't expect people that I wouldn't expect to have that reaction had that reaction. And then I realized that sometimes people look fine and look like nothing, their life is going good or their life is going perfect when they actually have a lot of um, issues or they have a lot of struggles that they have to deal with and it's not always visible. But I just remember feeling so, so, so first appreciated for my own life and realizing that there are a lot of problems out there that I myself was not facing and also understanding that you may not know what other people are going through. Turned out that the film remained in the cinema for five weeks and the only reason that it, 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 it stopped is that it was pirated and, and put on the and, and that, that, was, that was quite painful. I didn't spoke with the cinema movement about the whole experience and 
back and write another book. And, and so I went and I did um, you know, I did um, Hoshua. And there's something that I didn't say about Hoshua. Um, when my friends, my friends that I met online came to Barbados and did the, did the, um, directed the movie for me, um, she did um, um, only six to minutes. And the cinema owner said to me, uh, before I put it in the cinema, I want you to do another 30 minutes. I want you to make it a 90 minutes movie. And I said, oh no, I'm going to be cheap. God, back. <laughs> this is no month, you know, a month later, she got back. And the Lord said, you're going to do it. So, um, we went and we, we filmed and I directed. That was my first, um, you know, experience of directing. I was thrown right in the, 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 the third, the last thirty minutes of the film, and so um, I started writing about the six sisters, and I realized I was writing about abuse, um, sexual abuse, and um, you know that that was that went to a whole other level. Hosh Du um, was in the cinema for eight years. And once again, the, the boxes lined up for the students to see the film. They could not wait for Hushtu. And Hushtu went out to the sea and did it except for water. And uh, because of the content of the film, dealing with, with um, sexual abuse um, among um, um, children, um, maybe girls, maybe targeted girls. So then the Lord gave me. Um, story um, of a city girl and as I was writing the poem I realized that the city girl was really me and um, I was writing and smiling the whole time it was almost a joy to go to a writing session because it was like a, uh, I had this meeting so I would be trying to hurry up to finish dinner you know so that I could go to write because it brought me wonderful feeling and the, 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 it was difficult to write it was just flowing out of me and um, everybody who read the script they would cry you know and and so we decided okay we're going to film Gracie this is going to be an awesome film once again I went to the children of Gracie Campus and uh, when we did it we had many girls from the boys we got from different um, Places, lots of seeds, and from our schools and friends, uh, children of our friends, etc. And they were included in the And um, Christy was the, the movie that did, I mean, did it for us in terms of international um, exposure. So the others, um, we did get some traction in the, in the diaspora. Um, for the film, but it wasn't until the, the, um, the consulate started to promote the film in their various jurisdictions, jurisdictions um, that um, we started to see, I mean, just a tremendous um, responses from people uh, overseas. And watching the movie with America, in an American school, with American children watching it. And these kids were just cheering for Chrissy. They were crying, but they were cheering, Go, oh, Chrissy! Because I could see what was happening. I could still see the face of this little boy, this little black boy, and the way he was cheering for Chrissy. Come on, Chrissy, he could do it. And the tears were running down his eyes. And I realized these kids, they believe the story, and it means so much to them. So from Chrissy, um, we then went on um, to um, Vigilante the Crossing, which was uh, a really um, big, uh, big film, uh, quite expensive. And, and that, that, with that film, we wanted to really, um, we really wanted to improve the quality of, of the, the production um, on that film, and we were able to achieve that. Uh, again, we involved the communities. We were in post production. For, we were in post production for Vigilante the Crossing. And um, I got a call from um, Jamaica saying that um, they are going to you know, get films from the region and they will be submitting uh, these films to Pan African Film Festival in LA. Anyway, we got through to the Pan African Film Festival and that was uh, just an amazing experience to travel to LA and to meet other filmmakers and to be, just to be around the craft because I'm here, sitting here, here talking to you about making films.
seminars, and, and nothing beats really than just going out there and doing it. So vigilante um, was our fifth, our fifth film, and we had no no knowledge of making films, neither me nor my husband. And here we were in LA with a film, you know, walk on the red carpet, you know, um, it was just it was amazing. It was just an amazing experience, and from there, with that film, we were able to go to Cannes. And we screened Vigilante the Crossing um, in the distributor's market in town. And um, again, another feat that, you know, no experience. What are you doing at town? This is the largest film festival in the world. What are you doing here? There, there are people who God has placed a dream in your heart and you're trying to figure out, um, you know, how do I even start? What do I do? All I know was that God told me that I was going to leave the town. And I sent my film to a friend, uh, to make a friend of mine in New York, and she's also a distributor. And she told me, while the film was nicely shot, this is not the kind of film that you do well at town. And so I didn't say it alone, but I gave up on the dream. And I gave up on the, the thought about it. I gave up and they said, you can't be part of it unless you've done it over two films. I was ready. <laughs> I was ready because I, this was on my fifth film, I was ready. And I sent in all of my details, etc. and I was accepted to the Police Race Network. And I got to Cannes by myself, and I'm skipping over getting to Cannes, but let me tell you, I was, I was leaving Barbados with only my airfare to London. I did not have fare from London to Paris. I did not have a hotel. All I had was the word that God told me, gave me the faith to say, I am going to Cannes. And I was in the car, and my husband, just as crazy as I am, was driving me to the airport. And when I got to when, when on the way to the airport, his crazy friend Errol Griffin called and said, Martin, um, we, we got you a hotel. Okay? So we got a hotel. They, 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 it's a ministry, some ministry, I think it could have been tourism, so they said, we're going to give you a hotel. I said, thank you very much. Still did not have the airfare from London to Paris. I am a female and I'm going on a plane and I don't have anywhere. Where, who am I going to stay with? What am I going to do? And plus, I didn't have any money for it. And I was able to go to camp, and all of my expenses paid. And we had um, a little money to spend when we got there. I got there first, and then Dave um, came afterwards along with Judy Chargo and Daniel Chargo, who they were also part of the film. And the experience in camp was just amazing. The story needs to be told from from the perspective of someone in the diaspora. And I thought to myself, I mean, all these months I could have written the story. You know? And so it was then that I made the decision um, to write. However, I thought, because I don't know Africa very well, I needed to um, work with someone in Africa. And from my various film festivals that I've been to, one was in South Africa and I met someone from the Cameroon. And um, we, I called her up, I told her what it was about, and we worked on the film, I sent her a treatment, and then we, we worked together, because I knew that I, I had little knowledge of Africa. And I um, have to say that I'm so glad that we came back and we, we did that together. We have filmed now in the three countries, um, we filmed in Jamaica, filmed in Ghana and um, we um, also filmed in Barbados, not as much as the other two. Um, but the film is now um, at this stage of this recording, we're getting we're in film in post production and will be premiered in, in Ghana. And the significant thing about this particular film is that the government of Ghana has endorsed the pilots to do a rehearsal and the film works. And I got a meeting oh. and oh. Well, get over to the Pegasus Hotel now. The president is over there. And so I I had a lot of sleepers. <laughs> but we, we got over 
mentioned the care, but I had an alarm for it and this is not bad. Uh, we, we went over to the Pentecost to the, to the system now. And when we got there, somebody was waiting for us. And when the president finished speaking, they, 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 they moved the people and ushered us to the front of the, of, of, to, the to where the president was, President Ghana. And he shook our hands and told me he heard about the film and congratulated us on the film. And so he actually told us he wants the same company that film, he said. And they wanted a film to be part of the year of the show. It was amazing. He said, what is going on? Am I in a dream or a box? <laughs> you know? And again, it's that journey that we're on, that journey, that journey of faith, that journey of belief, that journey of jumping off, that journey of stepping out, that journey of whatever you want to call it, swimming, in, swimming deep in the ocean, hearing the word of God, having that little thought in your head, the idea that can move from, from your, your head into reality, into real life, you know, and um, to see it coming to, come to pass, the premiere is going to be in Ghana on December 7th, and again, um, sponsored by the Ghanaian government, and um, we are just thrilled you know, to be part of this, this wonderful um, experience. Um, Joseph film is, uh, the, the, the film Joseph is very special because uh, it is about a young Jamaican um, uh, guy. So, sorry, the film is about a young Jamaican doctor who is in search of his identity, um, trying to connect with Africa. And so he's very um, well off in Jamaica, but is not satisfied with just his you know, the material things. There's something deeper, and he had made a promise to his grandfather to search that out, and he goes to Ghana to find his roots. And so um, the film really chronicles his journey um, into, into Ghana and all the, the ups and downs of that. Uh, and so we're very, very happy that we've been chosen to do something so amazing and so important um, to to the people um, in Africa and also um, in the diaspora. Uh, and what, what it reminds me of is that prophecy that I told you that I received and I hid from my husband. Part of it said that I would be um, doing a lot of work that would help those that were once enslaved. We talked about in the property um, about the, helping to change uh, mindset um, from people who were enslaved, from my people that I, God was going to use me as a host um, to deliver my people from an enslaved mind and, and to bring them into who they truly are. I still have the prophecy and, and, uh, and to see that this thing is coming to pass um, is just amazing that God would have brought me from the US um, here and, um, and, 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 and we're living it out. So we're seeing God fulfilling every single thing that he said to us and it's very hard at times. Um, we still owe a whole lot of money for it. This is the same Joseph that seems so glorious uh, because it's tough. Uh, because you got a word from the Lord and you have faith doesn't mean that it's not hard. It is hard. And uh, we're still waiting on grants, we're still waiting on money promise, we're still waiting on, we have to wait on box office for some of it. Um, and so um, it, it's been uh, quite a journey, uh, not an easy one. Uh, a rough one at times, but it's been amazing. I would not, I would not trade it for the world. I've learned so much. I've traveled all over with doing something that I didn't go to 